Less is more. Well, that's what I was thinking when making a home for these two. This creature is a Japanese fire-bellied newt. It may look like a lizard, but it's in fact an amphibian, part of the salamander family. Meet Fig and Ferb, two newts I adopted ready to embark on an exciting journey to their brand new home, a paludarium that hopefully gives them a taste of home, Japan. These guys naturally exist in areas like Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu Islands. I hope I said that right. These guys live for 20 years, so uh, yeah, I'll be pretty old. And they still probably haven't even moved out by then. This is Ferb. Now Ferb literally looks like the purple version of Godzilla. I mean, look at him. It's uncanny. And Fig, the more cautious of the two. Both live in this tank, but I hated it. I wanted to create something they would enjoy and mimic their natural environment as best as I could. Something simple and something wild. I'm Max, and in this video I'm going to transform their tank into something super dope. We're setting up a paludarium that mimics the beauty of a slow moving stream complete with a small waterfall. Watch me create something that I hope they will enjoy and thrive in. I don't do this because I want to, I do this because I have to. I owe it to them. Now I'm not the best drawer, obviously, but I knew what I wanted in my mind. You see, my journey began with seeing my first ever newt, a tiny little fella like Calvin here, and then over years understanding the importance of crafting the ideal environment. I started with only a few things needed. Rocks, moss, branches, leaves, super glue, cotton, a small pump, and a can-do attitude. The first step was cleaning out an old fish tank completely. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty gross, but it had to be done. Once I had the tank all ready to go and dry, it was time to begin. But first, we needed to break some shit. Smashing these rocks into small pieces was a crucial part of what's to come, as the base layer as well as building the waterfall structure out of these tiny rocks. So let's get into the build. Now obviously you'll see me using super glue and cotton as to make sure the rocks stay together, but we'll get there. And by the way, this pump was like 10 bucks off Timu and it works and it's epic. And I've got two of these suckers now, so if you want to check it out, use my link below in the description and you'll get a $100 bundle on me. Building the waterfall can be a bit of a puzzle, as you need to move rocks around until you get the perfect mix. Now, there'll only be a bit of land. Why do you ask? Well, thanks for asking. Newts start their life in the water, as an egg into a tiny little axolotl, then they're terrestrial for about two to three years as a tiny little lizard, and then become almost fully aquatic when they go back in. Well, almost. They do like to and need to come out the water from time to time to take a break and dry out a little, but these guys, they just like to chill, and then back into the water they go. Once I was happy with the scape, I added the water, and I had to test the waterfall. Thank goodness, it works. Before I get them back in, what about these newts? Well at the bottom of the world here in New Zealand, they're an exotic pet. 
They're originally from Japan, so they're here through many years of captivity and not by choice. So I have to make sure they have a good home. Something interesting about them is that they're actually toxic. So when handling them, I have to make sure I wear gloves and wash my hands before and after. Although captivity reduces their toxicity due to the diet, so here in New Zealand they eat white worms, earthworms, blood worms, and grubs, so these guys are probably not as toxic. Nonetheless, I have to be careful and make sure they handle these animals safely. They're also nocturnal, meaning that they're mainly active at night, but do need a 12 hour light cycle. So I recommend getting an LED bar, maybe get one off Timu if you want a bargain, an LED bar will also help your plants flourish if you have any in the aquarium. So what do they eat? They are carnivores, so meat and lots of it. Not quite, but worms, water bugs, brine shrimp, some prefer live food like small earthworms, might eat everything and they just vacuum it up into their gobs. I have decided to add some small water grass trimmings. This wasn't originally part of the plan, but just to see if they grow really. Now splitting these apart took precision. It was like heart surgery, and if they grow, they might look pretty cool along the bottom. There was something missing, something critical. Aqualife. I need to add the final touch, the cleanup crew. What better way to have housekeeping than your own personal cleaners hovering around? Some aquatic snails. These guys multiply faster than rabbits on a hall pass, but will keep things clean and tidy by eating algae and decaying matter. With everything in place, it's time to get them in. Ferb first. Didn't know what to do with himself. Fig was a little skeptical, exploring, cryptically. A simple way to add stimulus or enrichment to these animals is just adding things like leaves, branches, different water levels. It's really that simple. In this new sanctuary, I hope these two can really act like newts. With really cool, slow moving water, a darker environment, live food, they can hunt, they can forage, they can live. Now these are both males, so they won't breed. And I don't intend to breed them. I just want to enjoy them as pets and these amazing, fantastic beasts that they really are. Now, as you can see, Fig is not as smart as Ferb. Always gets himself in very interesting positions. Help me! He'll manage. They're crafty. Now, this new paludarium is more than just a home. It's a snapshot of nature, life in the water, and an animal that exists thousands of kilometers away in the wild. Thanks for watching. So, if you want to support me, all you have to do is just like, subscribe, and maybe share this video if you enjoyed watching what life is like with newts, and how cool they really are. Stay tuned for more.